The last topic that I want to discuss with you, because that's uh, been a very big trend in China in the last uh, two years specifically, is live streaming e-commerce. We used to have these, TV, maybe you still do, these TV channels in the Netherlands during the day when nobody else was watching besides a couple of couch potatoes that didn't have anything to do the whole day and they would sell you these uh, these different products. This is basically also what is taking place in China. So there's people online live streaming and selling products. So I want to show you uh, how this trend developed and why it's so important and some of the different options that you have. So again, to start with some uh, statistics, you can see that before 2017, this was a trend that was almost non-existent, which also has to do with the fact that, of course, for live streaming, you have to have good bandwidth, you have to have good mobile internet speeds. So that's something that came in the last couple of years also in China. So that's also why you see so many more people watching videos, short videos, but also long form videos on their uh, mobile phones nowadays. But this trend really started taking off in 2019 and in 2020 it completely exploded. The reason why it exploded had a lot to do with uh, the COVID situation in China. Now, as you might know, COVID is not an enormous problem at the moment in China, but in the first quarter of last year, there were a couple of very serious lockdowns, especially in uh, the city of Wuhan. And people couldn't go out to shops because the shops were closed or in some cases they even had to stay home because a Chinese lockdown is very different from a Dutch lockdown. In a Dutch lockdown, the government asks you politely if you would please uh, stay home if you had any uh, health um, issues and complaints and they would ask you again if you had a positive test, but still 25% of the people don't do that. But in China, a lockdown is a real lockdown and you have to stay inside. Most of the people or a lot of the people in China live in, in a compound, in a xiaochu, as they call it. And there's only two gates that can lead you outside. And there's a guard there and that guard will prevent you from, from leaving if you're not allowed to leave. And in some cases there might be even people that uh, sort of watch you to see if you do, if you don't leave your apartment. So that's a real lockdown. So you cannot go into the shop. So the only th uh, thing that you could do was uh, buy online. But in certain cases, people want to see certain products and experience products, like especially like clothing, before they make a purchase decision. So that's one of the reasons why live streaming last year became really, really popular. But live streaming actually goes back much farther. Probably more than 10 years ago already, uh, you had platforms like yy.com. And on those platforms, and you still basically have a lot of different platforms nowadays, but on those platforms, you normally have pretty girls that are chatting, that are singing, that are dancing, that are flirting with uh, the people that are watching those live streams, most of which are actually are, are uh, single men that also feel like they have some kind of connection with the live streamers that they follow. Now, what happens is as a watcher, as a viewer of those live streams, you can buy virtual products and you can give these virtual products to those live streams. It could be a rose. It could be a bouquet of flowers. In some cases, you could even give them a virtual sports car. And these different virtual gifts have different values. So you buy them on the platform and the money that the platform makes from that is shared between the live streamer and the platform. So these people actually make money. And during one of those live streams, you will see that people are giving out those different presents. I'm going to show you a very short clip, but you can see on the left side that this lady is singing and she's getting all those different virtual products. So you see 82, 83, so more and more likes and more and more virtual products are given. So this is a way for those live streamers uh, already 10 years ago to make some money. I'm not going to go very deep into this, but if you are interested in, in uh, this phenomenon, you should definitely check out the documentary People's Republic of Desire. I think you can even watch it on, on YouTube now. If you read Dutch, there's also on our website a couple of uh, articles about this, how some of these uh, ladies are making a lot of money and the platforms together with them as well. So monetizing through live streaming was already something which was very common in China, just with a different business model. And if you look at the different people that were live streaming on, on, the, uh, on the bottom of this, um, this matrix, you'll see the Wang Hong, which basically means the uh, internet celebrities. So those were most of the time just these, these uh, girls, 
uh, streaming dance. It could also be guys that were streaming their uh, their games, their, their computer games. But most of them were not very well known for their knowledge about a certain topic. On top of that, you had bloggers and vloggers that were actually sharing their knowledge with other people. Now, if you again look at that platform, Xiao Hongshu, with people sharing their knowledge about foreign products, about foreign travel destinations, that's typical for this group of uh, KOLs. And then on top of that, you have stars and celebrities, singers, movie stars, etc., that were mostly known for, well, basically their, um, uh, their celebrity status and their attitude. So if you would want to use uh, a live streamer or an influencer for promoting your product, you could look at different types of, of KOLs, key opinion leaders and influencers. So the, the Wang Hong that don't are not well known for their knowledge and credibility, you could use them to demonstrate a product, for instance. They could perfectly show how a product works. But if it, uh, there's more of a story and more uh, credibility uh, necessary to sell a product, then a blogger or a vlogger with actual knowledge might be more uh, interesting. You could also use a celebrity, but of course those are, as we will see, are also very expensive. So this again, when you consider live streaming and you want to use a third party KOL, these are some of the considerations that you will need to make when making your choices. Now, again, Xiao Hongshu is one of the platforms where you nowadays also find a lot of, of, of live streaming. So now with the study tours that we do, we normally go to a company called Rudu, Rudu Media. And Rudu Media is a so-called multi-channel network. So what happened is you had these live streamers. Some of them were Wang Hong. Some of them were actually selling stuff on the internet. And these agencies like Rudu, they actually recruit these live streamers, they train them and they make them more popular. So they basically are sort of like a booking agency that is um, the in intermediate between a brand and these different, different live streamers. And if you go to this specific company, you will see that in the middle of the company, you have a lot of people that are watching internet statistics, but there's also uh, a lot of small rooms around the center of the, the company. And in those rooms, you will either have those Wang Hong that are flirting, dancing, singing, and you will have people that are actually selling things in their small little room and live streaming themselves. So these multi-channel networks have become very important when this market became more professionalized. And if you look at the way it basically works, so you have a brand it gets in contact with a multi-channel network, the multi-channel network based on a briefing will select the right KOLs for you, also based on your budget. And together with the platform, they will broadcast you and they will reach an audience. Whereas the, the brand also sends their products physically or only administratively through these e-commerce platforms but they also pay those platforms for advertising because besides the actual live stream, you need to have the visibility so people can find your product or people can find the actual live stream that you're making. So this is basically how the industry evolved. And if you put these things together, so the KOLs, the influencers, the multi-channel networks and e-commerce, you get the current form of live streaming e-commerce in, in China, which basically, like I said, evolved from the uh, previous forms of live streaming. Now, as I said, this became very popular during the COVID crisis in China because nobody could go to shops. So some people started to actually uh, live stream themselves, demonstrating products and selling products uh, online. But even when the shops were opening again, a lot of Chinese people were very reluctant to go back into the shopping malls. So what these companies started to do is because the customers were not coming in yet, they were live streaming themselves through the internet. So in this case, you see two shop assistants, you see on the right, you see a ring light and you see a mobile phone and they're streaming themselves online on one of Alibaba's platforms. So they continued to do that when, even when the, the customers were coming in later again, in the low traffic hours, they are still quite often live streaming themselves online to, uh, to actually reach a, a larger audience and sell a lot of products that way. What we've also seen is a lot of companies started having some problems with selling their products because some of the uh, normal uh, distribution channels were hard to reach during the COVID crisis. And when 
the lockdown was, was lifted. Again, a lot of consumers were very reluctant to go and travel and buy products. So some of the CEOs of big companies actually went online and live streamed themselves. Now, this is very different from uh, what we would do in the West. In most cases, you probably don't know the CEO of a big brand company, unless it's, for instance, Tim Cook that you will know for Apple. But most of these uh, people uh, that, that uh, are making consumer products are pretty faceless. You don't know them. But in China, quite often, they are quite well known and they have a lot of status also because they are the leaders, they're successful, and therefore they are also quite often considered to be very reliable. So in this case, you see the co-founder and uh, executive chairman of, of C-Trip, and this guy put on some traditional Chinese clothing and was live streaming himself. And in May 2020, he sold 8,000 uh, hotel bookings in, in one minute when they opened up the, uh, the sales channel. The same thing we've seen also with Smartison, which is a smartphone company. The CEO went online and he uh, sold 15.5, 15.5 million US dollars. And another example is uh, is a chairwoman of uh, of Gree. And now Gree is a company that makes all kinds of consumer electronics, smartphones, but also very well known for, for instance, their air conditioners. So she also went online and she sold 44 million US dollars in a live stream. But it's not just the big CEOs. What we also saw last year is that all kinds of farmers started live streaming because they were trying to get their products through to uh, the people in the, in the big cities. And some of the uh, traditional distribution channels uh, through wholesale and, and retail were closed off. So some of the online companies helped them to set up live streams and then ship the products for them to individual consumers in the, um, in the cities. Sometimes it was the farmers themselves live streaming, and I'll show you uh, an example uh, later on. Sometimes it was also the mayors of the counties that these farmers were living in that were helping them. They were, of course, a bit more PR trained. They were helping them to sell the products in, uh, in their country, counties. So that's what happened last year, and that's why it became very big. The players, basically, you can find in two groups. On the left side, you have the big e-commerce platforms. Alibaba, Jingdong, and Pindodo. And they all set up their own live stream platforms. So they basically were already doing e-commerce and they added video to that with Taobao Live, JD Live, and Dodo Live. On the right side, you have a completely different group. Those are the big short app videos in China. Now, you might recognize the first logo of Douyin by ByteDance because Douyin is basically the Chinese version of TikTok. So TikTok, for those who didn't know yet, is uh, basically a Chinese product. And that's also why Donald Trump tried to ban it. Uh, not successfully, of course, but that's um, a Chinese product. So Douyin and the big competitor is Kuaishou. And Kuaishou, again, is a short video app. So what these two guys did, these two companies did, they were already doing video and they added e-commerce to that. So they also started making it possible to sell through your videos. Again, a big division between Douyin and Kuaishou is that Douyin is mostly used in the bigger cities and Kuaishou is used more on the, in the countryside and in the smaller cities. So you will also see that the live streams that you see on these platforms are different and the type of products that are sold are also different. So let's quickly run through uh, some of them. Taobao live streaming is part of Alibaba. They started in 2016. And it gave people that were already selling their products on Taobao the opportunity to actually show people what those products were like, as you can, can see here. And viewers can directly buy from this live stream, which I'll show you in a minute. It was also a possibility for the influencers like the Wang Hong that already had a large follower base to monetize their fan base and start selling products on Taobao Live. In 2019, they did about 200 to 250 billion RMB. They are market leader in this uh, section. And most of the products they sell are about clothing and, and beauty care. They claim to have 50% uh, conversion rates, which seems really high. But as I'll show you later on, some products have a relatively high conversion rate. So the conversion rate being the number of people that are buying something divided by the number of people that are watching. So seemingly, this is a very good sales channel. 
JD Life. JD is known mostly for more consumer electronic products, technical products. So they have a different approach. They normally have an expert and a celebrity and a host. And they more try to educate users and try to create brand awareness for their different products. Dodo Life, again, like I said, Pindodo is mostly focusing on people in the smaller cities and they are helping out farmers a lot. So they started live streaming in 2019 and most of the people that you will see in the live streams are CEOs of factories that are making those products and some government officials and sometimes even farmers, actual farmers from the countryside. So those are the e-commerce platforms. Like I said, on the other side, you have the short video platforms. Douyin in May 2018 already started to um, make it possible for KOLs to have their own little shop on, uh, on Douyin. And they added live streaming through that in 2019. Again, mostly focusing on people in the bigger cities and mostly focusing on more expensive products. So the GMV, which is gross merchandise value, so the value of all of the products sold through the channel is about 200 billion in 2024 uh, Douyin. Kwaisho, now this is a, a picture I took yesterday of a woman that was um, selling umbrellas on Kwaisho, all kinds of umbrellas. Kwaisho launch was actually one of the first uh, short video apps that was adding live streaming for e-commerce purposes in 2017. Their GMV is a bit lower and 60% of what they actually uh, have as a revenue is still in virtual gifts, but more and more, 90, about 90%, is live streaming e-commerce. So you will see a lot of, of Wang Hong mostly. Most of the products that you'll see are cheap products, cheaper than 50 uh, renminbi. And again, the target audience is lower tier cities and, and rural areas. Market leader, again, of course, is Alibaba, Taobao Live at almost 60%, and Douyin and Kwaishou are the number two and three. And then you have a whole range, including Pindodo and uh, JD, that are in the category of, of others. Now, how does this work? Now, there's basically two things that you can do if you are a short video app. One thing is you can actually have people create short videos, which is not really live streaming yet. And then by clicking in those videos, you can actually buy the products. And I'll show that on the left. So here you see a, a small mini washing machine. And if you like that and you click on the buy button, you actually go to an external website and you can see that you can buy the product there. So that's one model of selling through these short apps. But if you actually um, add live streaming to it, it looks more like what you'll see on the right side. So this is a farmer that is actually live streaming how he's harvesting his bamboo. And if you like that, you can click on the product and you can go to the product page. The live stream will continue in that same window. So you can very easily by clicking on that return back to the live stream. And because this is in, in Douyin, in TikTok, you swipe up and you go to, in this case, a Wang Hong. This is a lady selling sweaters. And again, if you like that product, you click on it and you immediately have the product page. And if you swipe up, there's a Wang Hong. Swipe up again. And this is a farmer that is selling some kind of fruit, some kind of berries. I don't know exactly what it is. And if you like that product, you can go into the product page. You'll see the product here again. And if you think that's, that's good stuff, I want to buy that. You click on the buy now button. You decide how many packages you want. And if you click on that, you go to the checkout page. And you can in the middle, you see a blue and a green button for Alipay and for WeChat. And you can pay within the app and it immediately gets uh, gets shipped to you basically so the interesting thing is that this all happens in the app you don't go to any external website anymore because basically what you need to do is in Douyin one time you need to enter your shipping address 
and you one time also uh, register or you, you connect to Alipay and, and WeChat and you can very easily from these different live streams buy products without having to go to different websites again. And that that seamless integration that you see in uh, China is one of the reasons why live streaming commerce has become so effective and so popular. Now, what you can also do if you recorded a live stream, you can, of course, recycle it. So if you go into one of those apps and you look, for instance, for an All Saints jacket, you'll see the jacket here. If you click on that, you'll see, hey, that's a nice jacket. And there is a live stream available in which they demonstrate this jacket. If you click on that button, you will actually come in the middle of a live stream, which you can see in the slider. Uh, at the bottom that this is not the start of a live stream so this is a live stream that was broadcast as previously but it's tagged at this specific point where they are demonstrating the actual product of this jacket so you can watch this video and see how this lady uh, shows you what the jacket is like and if you like the jacket you again click on the product and then go back to the product page and you can purchase it there or you can go back into the live stream now another example I was uh, looking for some uh, Unar, which is uh, cloud ear mushrooms in uh, China. If you look for that, you can see here that there is one seller that has a live stream available. And when you click on that, you get straight into the middle of her previous live stream where she's demonstrating that specific cloud ear mushroom product. Now, if you like that, there will be a button that says buy now. And if you click on that again, you go to the product page and you can immediately buy it within the app. So totally completely seamless if you are following a specific merchant on one of those platforms you can even see within their merchant page that there is a previous or a current live stream available so if you click on this you go immediately into the live stream where she's demonstrating the apples that they are growing and selling through uh, through the app so completely seamless combination of video and e-commerce now Yozan is um, a company that is running a platform also as well or running some tools and they looked at different different product categories and they found that certain product categories have a much higher conversion rate through live streaming which are, are the yellow bars than when you try to just sell it through a shop without any video without any live streaming you can also see that education is not doing as well so that's not something that that sells well through a live stream but beauty electronics clothing childcare sells quite well and the thing about some of these things especially electronics and female clothing is that people actually want to see they cannot go to the shop themselves so they cannot hold that camera or that telephone themselves but if somebody else demonstrates how that product works what the features are and actually shows you what a certain piece of clothing is like when they put it on they put it on themselves then you can be convinced to actually buy it through uh, live stream shopping now, you'll see that again in these figures, what are the most important reasons to buy through a live stream is because you have a way to compare different products. Somebody will show you different products and they will give you an all round product introduction and a presentation, something that you uh, could normally only do when you go to the shop. And as, as we've seen before, some of those products are not available in some of the shops near you. So. That all sounds really, really cool. So you pr probably might think, well, we need to advise to incorporate live shopping in their, their setup. But it also can be extremely, extremely expensive. Now, there's a website by a company called Park Lu in China, which has a budget calculator. And you should definitely go out and play with it and try out some different things. So what you can do is you can choose different platforms and then you can see how you can pay for posts, how you can pay for videos, for live streams. And you get to choose from the top tier, so the most popular live streamers, to the micro uh, streamers. And you can play around and see what budget you would need to actually do this. That's when you would hire one of those KOLs through a multi-channel network. So do play around with that. And based on your findings, do incorporate that in the advice that you give for this business case.